Hey, thank you very much for joining us on another informative, educative, and of course, pretty much entertaining episode of The Medley Show with Cecil on the Nigerian Television Authority Network Service, broadcasting from the nation's capital, Abuja. My name is Cecil Egbele. All right, um, today is going to be, yeah, quite informative as usual. Today we'll be talking simply first aid. Now, when you are in a house and someone like has a stroke or there is a fire burn or something happens, even in an accident scene, what's the first thing you do to help remedy the situation before the person is taken to the hospital? These and many others will be our focus on the medley show for today as we will be discussing first aid. And um, our phone line, our phone line to reach us today is 081 one two nine one seven four seven six zero i'll take it again zero eight one one two nine one four seven six zero do send us a message ask us questions on different uh, emergencies different uh, first aid situations you may want uh, you may want answers to and be sure in the course of the program we have two guests with us in the studio who do justice to this. And trust me, you, you will enjoy it. All right, um, before we get to meet my guest, it's time for us to um, set the tone with this. Now, in our homes, there are some very, uh, some of the frequent uh, domestic accidents we see are fire burns, hot water burns. Uh, okay, let me just give you the whole, let me tell you the fact. I actually had a fire burn, a hot water burn, some time back. And I started wondering, Oh my God, what's the first thing I'm supposed to do? Oh my God, I should have taken this first aid classes very seriously. Um, salt, salt. Yes, I quickly put salt. I'm like, okay, no. Uh, then I waited for a while. Nothing was happening. I said, okay, what else, what else, what else? Then I just asked to ask the Google. I went on the internet and asked. Then I said, first put on the running water. I rushed the bathroom, put on the running water. I was also, I was confused. After then I said, Cecil, you should take a, you know, a small lesson, some lessons in first aid all right now let's go on to our first feature our first feature is on burns and of course you know when there are burns the skin is a little is yeah it's not so friendly to look at so your viewers discretion is advised you might see some pictures a little gory please um, just um, just beware of those pictures all right viewers discretion advice as we take this feature on burns Burn injuries have been a constant in homes for ages. These injuries range from first, second, and third degree. Most common domestic burns are first and second, while first degree burns affect just the outer layer of the skin. Second degree burns affect both the outer and underlying layer of the skin, causing swelling and blistering. Both burns can be taken care of at home. Here are some age-long home remedies to burns. Run a cold water first on the burned skin for about 5 to 10 minutes to cool down the temperature. This prevents the heat from penetrating and burning the deeper layers of the skin. The natural anti-inflammatory aloe vera can be applied to relieve pain, blisters, and scars. Gently apply the aloe vera gel to the affected burned skin once or twice daily until it is fully healed. The older sweetener known as honey is not only sweet and medicinal for the consumption, but it also has healing properties when applied to burned skin. The antioxidant acid and sugar content in honey reduce the hotness, disinfect the wound, and promotes healthy skin tissue formation. Known as ori in Yoruba, okume in Igbo, and kadanya in the Hausa language, the African shea butter is one natural bone healer of the skin that reduces the swollen burn and ease the pain on the burnt skin. This rich antioxidant contains vitamin A that helps to lessen the damage done on the skin and the presence of vitamin E in the shea butter prevents wrinkles on the skin. Vinegar is said to be a good first aid for burns as the antiseptic attributes present in it kills bacteria and prevents infection. Dilute equal parts of vinegar and water 
and use a piece of clean cloth to cover the solution on the affected area. One of the popular remedies for treating burns in ancient times is the plantain leaf. These leaves contain antimicrobial action. They are used by mashing the leaves properly and applying them directly to the burn area. It will stop the pain instantly. This nature's remedy for burns have been trusted for ages. So, in the absence of antibiotic pills and creams, this first aid can serve just fine. If the pain persists, do see a medical practitioner as soon as possible. Well, indeed, after my pain persisted, I actually went to see a pharmacist and uh, I did that as soon as possible. Though I must say that, um, I don't know, I'll talk about that later. All right, it's time for us to meet my guest. And my guest is... Um, is head of training in the Nigerian Red Cross. He is Mr. or maybe Dr. Aldu Goji. So Aldu Goji, welcome. Thank you. Dr. Mr. No, it's Mr. Mr. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll see your Red Cross. Uh, you're the head of training Red Cross. Yes. Yeah. I really would like to join uh, get uh, join the Red Cross so that I can actually get to help people. All right. You guys are doing a very good job. I said at the opening, I had a burn. I put salt first. I don't know where I had, I don't know what came to my mind. I thought salt was a good idea. Well, seeing that feature by Capsi, I think I should have seen that earlier. So really, for burns, I see when the feature was going on, you were looking at and nodding at some of these. Tell us about, in your position, your opinion, and uh, what would you advise for first aid uh, as grass to burns? Well, good afternoon, viewers over there. Okay. Uh, honest speaking, uh, as we are talking of burns, the most important thing we may look at is that in burns, two things happen. Okay. One, the skin will serve as a protective measure of the body. It compromised by the burns. So the skin is damaged. Okay, Infection true. can easily set up. Okay. Second, the pains that you are talking about. The skin has a sensory organ which sends message to the brain as far as pain's sensation is concerned. Yeah, it's a, I got it on the message. So, so those are the two things that happen, the pains and the tendency of that person to become infected because the skin is no longer there to protect the body. All right. So those are the two aspects you may look at it. They have mentioned it when I look at the clip over there. Most of the issues they are talking about is the issue of the pains. They forgot the infection aspect. Okay, um, I agree, infection and all that stuff. Now, I'm in the house. Um, my sister gets a burn. Uh, she shouts and she's screaming, oh, my child, what's the first thing I should do? And then what should I, uh, then at what point do I take her to a hospital or a pharmacy? Just let's take it as simple as that. Yeah, yes. the, the first thing is to put that burns aspect into running water for at least 10 minutes. Ooh. Or 10 to 20 minutes at least so that the pains will reduce. Can't I just dip it in water instead of putting your running water? No, once you dip it inside the water, you cannot ascertain uh. the pains aspect. Uh. Because as you are putting it in the running water, you are asking yeah. the casualty. Is the pains is going down? But once you dip it inside the water, that aspect of assessment is lost. Yeah, that's true. Because when I just remove it, then I might feel, feel the pain back. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so that is it. You put the burns as area in a running water for at least 20 minutes. Mm. Then you ask the casualty, how are you feeling how now? You feeling? If the pain is going down, then the casualty will tell you exactly what is happening. Once the pain is over, now remaining the infection, infection. aspect, where you need to cover it with a clean materials, then you now think of moving the casualty to the nearby facility. Oh, okay. Um, I, actually, when you say <coughs> you cover with uh, material, I would have thought we need air. Let's uh, let's put it. Let's not cover it so that air would, you know. I thought air is supposed to be good. Yeah, if you look at it, the air is full of germs. Germs oh. are everywhere inside the air. Oh my God. So why is it in contact with the bounce area? The person becomes infected again. Mm, so okay. you've not done for eight. All right. So now we know um, when uh, you, you have you have a burn or someone around you have a burn and confused what to do. 
first thing running water 10 minutes at the minimum after that what about putting like um jelly share butter vaseline all that all these aspects are not necessary these are all home remedies because they don't know what to do you don't know how the sterility of that vaseline that you are applying maybe uh, there are germs inside that okay you don't know the the ointment you are putting all right, now you know, running water first, then go to the pharmacy or the doctor so that you can actually ascertain the level of the one first degree or second degree and take it up from there. Now let's look at something else. Um, stroke. Yeah. Someone gets a stroke in the house and I have no idea what to do about stroke. I only have heard people have stroke. What, how should I help? Should I just start, should I pick a phone and call someone or what's the first thing I should do? When you look at it, all these are signs that give signals mm -hmm. in stroke in first aid there's something we say fast f a s t fast okay fast f stands for the facial expression of that particular person okay the face will start to drip there's a slight twist on the face that's giving you a signal that stroke is about to set in so the person would know definitely Okay. Then secondly, the A stands for the arm movement. There must be some certain weakness in the arm. That particular area that stroke is about to happen, there must be a kind of numbness, weakness in that area. So the second one is the speech aspect. There must be a kind of alteration in the speech because the is a shift on the face, then the tonation will not come clearly. Then T stands for time. Now it's time for you now to move this casualty to the nearby facility because stroke is about to set up. So all wow. these conditions give signal unless you ignore the signal and it knocks you. Oh, okay. Now I'm there. I just learned that. So that's uh, what we should do. And the person who is actually having a stroke should have, have all the signs and should quickly move <coughs> or look for medical assistance. And you know, so stroke just comes. I mean, stroke doesn't like, it's not like, is it hereditary or something? Because I like to know the causes of things. Most of these things, when we look at the, 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 the stroke, uh, it, it, it followed by hypertension. It starts from the high blood pressure oh. because of the high pressure in the brain, the blood vessels within the brain ruptured and blood accumulate in the brain. Okay. So any part that the brain, uh, the blood accumulate, the other aspect suffer the stroke. Mm. If the blood accumulate on the right aspect, then the left aspect suffer the stroke. Okay, now, um, you know, how do you have to allow me to take time to actually simulate all these things you have said, and there's still so much more. I know there are different areas um, you might, uh, emergencies, you might want to have answers to as regards first aid. Please do send in your questions, comments, or contributions to our phone line, 081-1291-14760, and the number is showing on your screen right now. Now, many of, how many of you have a first aid box in your homes? Uh-huh, I know you don't have one. I know you, yeah, you, but no, not you, yeah, you. I know you don't have one in your home. And uh, we actually went out on the street and asked people they had and if they could name about five items in a first aid box. And there were quite some interesting responses. And uh, this was our finding. bandage, there should be medical scissors and spirits, iodine and sanitizer. The plaster and uh, scissors and uh, also maybe a paracetamol and then um, iodine and then uh, the, I don't know the name, the other blue one, that is, uh, like in. GB also. Like ink and also like G, like 
spirit for the washing of the wings. We need to have an hydrogen to be in the first aid box, a uh, glove for the nurse. Uh, we should be able to have scissors um, measured like um, this. There are a lot of things that need to be there, you know. Medically, paracetamol should be in the first aid box, at least to subsidize the pain. Paracetamol, you have to look at uh, some items like scissors. You have to look at uh, some, uh, what do you call this, um, bandage. Okay, now, well, well, some of the things in the first aid box, I know you yeah, had those days, our first aid box, you have this blue thing, this GV, I don't know, we call it GV, I don't know, whatever. It's GV. It's GV. Oh, good. Yeah, so, you know, if you ask me the first things in the first aid box, they're all like, most of these, I know paracetamol has to be there, a spirit has to be there, a cotton will have to be there, a bandage, GV. Whoops, I got five, and I'm good. All right, so, um, you know, just if you're just joining us, the program is the Medley Show. And today we're talking first aid, and I've been having a chat with the head of the Nigerian Red Cross, uh, the person of Mr. Audu Gori. Yes, Audu Gori has been my guest, and we've talked um, burns, and we've talked uh, stroke. Yeah, stroke was really scary. Yes, and joining us also in the studio is uh, someone else who's going to talk first aid, as first aid, especially when it has to do with your personal security. He is a security consultant, and he is uh, Pietro Uzo of Great Child Foundation. Thank you very much for coming around. Thank you. Um, it's all first aid. We will be talking, we'll talk about medical and everything, because all well, the times we are in, we all have to be safe, you know. Uh, every day in the news, we hear different things. And, you know, once upon a time, uh, a friend of mine have told me, Cecil, you have to get a pepper spray. That should be the first thing to... Tell us the first aid for... Okay, let's start with the lady. How can I be safe when I step out? Or when I'm in a situation that I'm a little not too sure, an elevator, for instance, or wherever. Well, thank you for that um, insight. Good morning, viewers. For me, I would say um, the security procedure for a lady is totally different from that of male because um, women are more vulnerable to attacks and then... Um, they should be more prepared with elementary security gadgets. But besides the gadget, there are things that um, they should have at the back of their mind. Being women, just like you rightly mentioned, pepper spray. Okay, I will have to stop you there okay. uh, very quickly, very quickly. I we need to take a, a feature very quickly. And this time, uh, we'll still talk about um, accident, but this time domestic accidents. We know in homes, there are different kind of domestic accidents. Especially when you have children around, many things can happen, nails, whatever. Now let's have a look. At, let's take a look at this feature and learn one or two things on what to do when accidents happen at home. Accidents typically result in injury, whether they occur on the road or at home. Taking the proper measures in the event of an accident can really go a long way to prevent permanent injury or loss of life. Road accident is one of the most common situations people find themselves. The case isn't about an individual or group of individuals involved in an accident, but rather measures to take in making the victim get an immediate first aid treatment. These are some of the first aid tips for road accident victims. The first thing to do after a road accident is alerting oncoming traffic that an accident has taken place. This is to ensure your own safety before helping the victim to prevent further casualties. Secondly, turn off the vehicle ignition as there might be spilled fuel or other fire hazards. Make sure the victim's head, neck and back are treated with great care and not jacked around. If the victim is unconscious, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation techniques will benefit the victim. In a case of heart attack, it takes over seven minutes for an ambulance to arrive in life-threatening situations, but it only takes four minutes to die after a heart attack. Being able to give CPR can prolong life until paramedics arrive, increasing the chances of recovery and survival. 
In homes, especially where there are children, everyone must learn to be a first aider, as these young ones are always prone to domestic accidents. Here are some common home accidents and how they can be managed immediately they occur. Any burn should be first placed under cold running water between 5 to 10 minutes. Having a clean plastic bag or clean film in a first aid kit can be an ideal way to cover the burn to keep clean and help to heal. Any form of cup means there will be blood. This is one of the most difficult process involved in administering first aid. To manage this, first apply pressure to stop bleeding and apply any antiseptic to the affected area. Then if it is a deep cut, seek medical treatment after the first aid. A sprain is when a ligament which connects parts of a joint is stretched, twisted or torn. Knees, ankles and wrists are most common parts of the body affected. If this occurs, apply an ice pack, rest the affected area and give it time to heal. Being conscious of your kid's health means making sure any frailing electrical leads, tablecloth edges, and dish towels are out of reach in order to help prevent accidents from happening. Minor falls can lead to nasty bruises, which can be quite painful. Applying a cold pack or even a packet of frozen peas can reduce swelling. It is always wise to prepare for unforeseen circumstances as accidents at home or on the road are unavoidable situations. For every accident, there is a cause, and we can only avoid it by being cautious and learning from our mistakes and those of others. All right, thank you very much, Ibiri, for that one. I think it's good that it's good to know that we've learned the thing or two. Well, just before we took this feature, the last feature, we were having a chat. We were listening to a security consultant who was telling us about personal security. I had asked the question, uh, she gets um, safety for ladies, and he was trying to throw light on this. And uh, I stopped you midway. I'm sorry. Can you pick it up? <laughs> thank you very much. Well, like as I was saying, um, for ladies, the dangers are more severe than men because they are more vulnerable. Hmm. So you already pointed out the, uh, the aspect of having a paper spray handy. Hmm. That's good. But most importantly is about being situationally aware of the environment, being proactive before it actually happens because that's your best bet to safety. So hmm. this uh, means trying to eliminate every possible distraction in the environment, trying to be as observant as you could be, trying to not fiddle with your phones, elementary things that could easily get you carried away. Yeah. You know, so for a lady, you have to um, be more attentive twice as the time a man should be because once you are there, you could easily be subdued. And we always advise that um, if you find yourself in that situation, don't be embarrassed or ashamed to scream for help. Yes. Scream at the top of your voice if you're already in that precarious situation. But before you get there, it's better to be uh, prepared or averted that in that situation. So, more preferably, be observant. Try to look people in the eye and um, analyze their expression because, as we say, that um, the eyes is the window to the soul. So, from their facial expression, <laughs> you could tell their intentions and be prepared. And also, we could say we always advise women be bold, be mm. confident, you know. So, in certain situations, if it's too late already, be, be ready for aggression, you know. So, you, the way your disposition puts whomever at bay or puts them in a check. Mm. So don't appear all um, helpless, weak or weak. helpless. Mm. No, be bold, be aggressive, be firm. You know, if they look at you, look them right in the eyes and be prepared. And mm. be ready to shout, be ready to run. <coughs> but um, also in the same vein, if the assailant is armed, we mm -hmm. always advise, please don't contest, don't be brave, just allow it go and report to the nearest authorities. Okay, ladies, you've heard that. Don't be afraid to scream. Yeah, screaming is so easy. It comes to us naturally. Trust me. <laughs> we can do that. All right. Um, now, Fe uh, Red Cross, let's get back to you. You had a couple of questions already here. And we'll take it very quickly because we still have so much. Um, please do tell us where you're writing us from. I had a bond once, but I had to put my hand in water. Then I put salt and it hurt me a lot. Yeah, salt thirsts me. I know that. Please, what range of BP can lead to a stroke in the human body? All right, so is this good day. I've been having BP of 140 to 80 for quite a long time now. 
this i need advice on how to go about that and let's take one more what can we do to prevent stroke uh okay so maybe we'll just can you touch on it very quickly on this so that we can yeah let me let me start with the bands as we rightly said the best for aid is just to put the bands area in your running water mm -hmm. once the pens goes down then depending on any pens that is above the size of the hand refer this person to the nearby facility mm. or the bands on the face and genital areas the face carries the respiratory aspect of the body yeah. so very dangerous refer this person okay. the genital area are not always exposed yeah. once you leave it infection can set in mm. quickly refer this quickly. person to the nearby facility okay stroke. when stroke depending on the age somebody having 140 over 80 if it's around uh, 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 30, 35, we cannot say it's hypertensive because definition of hypertensive goes with age. I'm um, 20, somebody with 70 years, our PP can never be the same. Yeah, yeah. Because as you grow, the blood vessels also becomes older. So, but the best thing, research have so shown by the Cardiologist Association of Nigeria now that in every four Nigerians now, one is hypertensive. Hey. Can we see the dangers? Pietro, that's so, a scary figure. So we need, we need to visit hospital constantly and take our BP. Well, you if you cannot do that, the digital right? machines are available everywhere. Why can't we just get it? You mean it? a quarter of Nigerians are hypertensive? Yeah, I can, yeah. <laughs> that is what the Cardiologist <laughs> Association of Nigeria says. Hmm. I don't really verify this. Is it okay. really true or not? All right, so, so let um, we'll move very, very quickly. I'll ask you a question, and then I'll need you to take something on accidents. We saw road accidents. Yes. You also have you also have to do something in Red Cross. You are a Red Cross first aider, too. Yeah. Ah. Our boss. Oh! <laughs> Wait a minute. You know he's your boss. Yeah. Okay. Did I forget to say I have two Red Cross first aiders here? He's a trainer. You are a first responder. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's uh, quickly, this season, we're in the dry season. And some things prone during the season is asthma, asthma attack. So what's, if um, an inhaler is not close by, what's the first thing the person sufferer should do or the person around should do? The best thing is to identify what causes the asthma, particularly okay. at this weather, mm. because there are allergic asthma and there are no allergic ones. Mm. The allergic ones, depending on what trigger the asthma, if it is a dust, you avoid dusty Just areas yeah. during. If it is a smoke, you avoid smoky areas. If it is a perfume, because some even perfume yeah. trigger the, the the attack. So if it's or perfume fried food. or fried food, or even as hair or any other things, the best thing is to identify the cause and avoid the cause. Okay, avoidance is the best thing. Worst case scenario. The person is outside and is ha is now choking. What shall we do? What can we do? Choking is different. Okay, so okay. Well, uh, choking is different. Person start getting the attack. Yeah. Once you get the attack, check the persons whether he has inhaler. If okay. he doesn't have inhaler, quickly move this person because it's not something that can be taken care of by first aid right now. You uh, have to move the into mouth the hospital. mouth respiration does not work for that. No, no, no. You can't Oops. do mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration for somebody who is having asthma. It's an it's irreversible airway dysfunction. Oh, it's irreversible. Okay, I thought, yes. it's, I thought they are all air, so yeah. air is air. Yeah, no, it's irreversible airway dysfunction. Once drugs is given, the person starts breathing perfectly. Okay, so well, I hope we don't lose the person before getting to health center. No, 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 okay. no. Okay, no. there are many pharmacies around. Um, inhalers are over the counter. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so Pietro, Whoa. road accident. We just saw that in you know, one of the features. So when the road accident happens, you know, the first thing we do, whoops, my phone, let's take a picture. Let's, I want to be the first to break the news. You know, that's what we do. But in an ideal situation, what should be ideal? What should the passerby or the onlookers, what should we do as a first responders? The same thing we used to do before the, the advent of phones, <laughs> you know, first be human. Yeah. It's not about breaking the news or capturing the action. It's about taking care of them. You know, know the ones that need immediate attention, the ones that something is on them or the weight of the vehicle or something. In mm. precarious situations, I would say, administer first aid to them. 
and then see the ones you can quickly rush to a nearby clinic. You don't have any business with your phone, so first be human. Yeah, but this age of breaking news. I want to, I want to be the first to break the news. I want to not pick up my phone. All right, right now I'm in front of the bridge. If you can see, people are dying here. Oh my God, look at blood. Yeah, oh my God, look at blood. Oh, you know, you know, we have, okay, these are some of, some very terrible accidents. And like, I don't know, there's something about this embassy, Ember months and uh, an accident, but I really hope it's not the Ember thing. But it's, um, well, now you know what to do. Your phone should be secondary. Let's be human first. All right, let's take a few messages. Um, someone is asking, uh, you for Ijabu Ijesha in Oshun State, uh, if somebody has been beaten by a snake, what should the person do? Um, all right, that's one. We'll take, hi, I'm Tony. What is the first thing to do if a patient that fell and had a dislocated wrist, I mean, a clear shift of the bone to another position? Okay, now these are very, these are two very important uh, ones. Uh, all right, let's take that, uh, the dislocation. Let's take the dislocation very quickly. Dislocation quickly, you need to immobilize the area. You put crepe bandage. We all know dislocations is twist in the joint. Yeah. So by the time there's twist, you quickly, what happens? Blood rush to that area. Then you see that swelling, that pains, that's difficulty moving the part area. Try to okay, bandage the Okay, the person said a clear shift of the bone to another position. Maybe obviously he's seen the bone shift. If there is a clear shift in the bone area, we treat it at fracture. Okay, so what should I do first before taking Immobilize. The immobilize the affected area. Immobilize. Immobilization. Speak it in English, please. Immobilization. Immobilization means the affected area should be supported. Oh, good. Like support the affected oh, area. You put a wood yeah, there. you put a wood and support the area so that the area will minimize or you you hinder that area from movement because it is pains, it's the movement that causes the pains. Yeah, Once you deny lift. it from movement, the pains cause that. I've lifted the person to the hospital before even remembering that one. Tell us about snake bites. Hmm. Uh, I think that was actually trending because of the tragedy. <laughs> at, I know. Uh, you know. So uh, we've seen lots of um, precautionary measures in terms of uh, disinfect this in your soccer way and this and uh, lots of um, theories going on about that. But I would say once you have this snake bite, it depends on the area you had the bite. It depends on the kind of snake. So lots of dynamics. Kind of snake. And you can't stay to find out what kind of snake. Bit exactly. I was exactly. So um, I think we should have some certain um, elementary first aid things at home. We know things like um, black stone, things like um, that black stone um, works. Niche. These local things really help those black venues. Stone. Yes. Okay, I just thought some people were just trying to sell a stone. No, it no, works. It it works. works. Okay. You just need to, um, you know, tear this part of the area and put it there while you get to the hospital for more. For <laughs> Perfect. Okay, now this phone is asking. So, for example, like gas explosion during cooking, and you are being you are being burnt. What? do you do as a first aid like we are burning in the process i know i used to hear they say roll your body on the ground if you are burning so i don't know what's the first thing for burning yeah. for in, a, in that kind of case yeah once you are engulfed in fire the first thing is try to mm -hmm. roll over so yeah. that you can quench the fire once the fire is quenched the aspect is now try to reduce the pains by putting that burnt area in the running water Hmm. But the most important thing is to quench the fire. Oh, my, I should throw away the dress now. <laughs> that's, the, that's the list of your worries at that point. Hey, okay, <laughs> I thought. So you, you either look for blanket and cover, cover the area. I heard cover that, that too. persons. Once you cover him, because oxygen is yeah. very convulsive, now you deny oxygen. Okay. Combustion is no longer there. The fire collapses or dies. All right, so Tony, um, okay, who asked the question? Please write your name where you're writing from. All right, uh, we put together a, a little skit on snake bites. Like we say, this is a season. If I when I have to walk where there are lawns or grasses, I'm always afraid of, yes, uh, sometimes I have to start hopping. Anyhow, so when you have a snake bite, this is something you should do. It's a little skit put together by my crew. Oh my god, to 
Andy, please get on my chest. Okay, just calm down. Thank you. Do you see the color of snake or the type of snake that beats you? The color or any markers on the snake? No, I just heard the rattling sound. Okay, no problem. Why don't you sit back and watch this instructional video while I continue with the first aid and take her to the hospital? It is a good idea to notice the color, body scales, head, or any special characteristics of the snake because it will help the doctor to identify the venom. If you missed it, it is okay. Do not waste your time looking for the snake or trying to kill it. The most important thing is the victim should remain calm, relaxed and fearless. Otherwise, it will increase the blood flow and the heart rate, resulting in the rapid spread of venom. Do you know only 20% of the snakes are venomous and there are 50% chances that venomous snakes will deliver a dry bite? Even if a snake has delivered a venomous bite, by following the correct treatment and measures, you can easily save yourself from any injury. The part of the victim should be kept immobile as much as possible while moving the victim, and it should be kept below the level of the victim's heart. Remove any tight-fitting clothes, any rings, wristwatch, etc. from the affected body part or on the wound itself. Otherwise, it might cause swelling. It is important not to cut the wound as it will increase the chances of infection. Do not suck the venom because it will only remove a negligible amount of venom and might also poison the helper. Do not eat or drink anything, particularly caffeine or alcohol, as it increases the heart rate and blood flow. Arrange a long bandage or clean cloth. Wrap up the wound loose enough to insert a finger and wrap it up till the top. Do not use a tourniquet as it could potentially restrict the blood flow to the affected area. Do not use ice on the wound because it might increase the damage. Immobilize the body part with a wooden piece or a stick and tie it with a bandage or a cloth before you transfer the victim to the hospital. Welcome back. Susan has just received the antivenom and within some hours she would be much better. All right, that's my crew. They have put together that little skits. Well, it's a snake bite. It's just something for us to learn a lesson or two. Well, we've been talking first aid for different ailments, and many of your questions have been coming in. Um, we have questions around, I don't know, between, uh, let's see. We have question on scorpion bites. We have another question on uh, gas explosion in the kitchen. We have question on what, my question is how can I clam, how can I calm down an injured person who is being burned by hot oil? So the person is finding it difficult coming down an injured person. So let's um, take those ones very quickly. Which one? Let's start. Okay, let's start with um, the fire burn in the kitchen. Yeah, mostly we find out that this outbreak of fire in the kitchen is due to using phones while cooking. You know, those phones has radiations. And this radiate communicate with either the cylinder in the kitchen or other things. Wow. So very dangerous. If you are using gas inside your kitchen, avoid using phones because anything can happen. Explosion can take place anytime. Hmm. So we are educating our communities to avoid using phones while cooking in the kitchen. Please, if they are using cylinder. All right. You heard that scorpion bites. Scorpion bite, uh, uh, the only thing you can do is to just move this casualty to the nearby facility because in scorpion bite, you cannot pull water. Yeah. So move this person to the nearby facility. In the night. So that, whether in the night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. So accident scene. You, okay, you've just, taken the que you've just taken that of accident. Now let's talk about in your home, you are alone in the house, maybe a guy or a lady, for instance, and you, you, there's a break-in, an attempted break-in in the night. What's the first thing you should do? And you are alone in the house. Whoa. How can I stay safe? Or should I just open the door before I break it down? Or they're trying to break it down. Should I just gently open the door for the person? <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, that's why situation awareness is very important. Mm. Before you get to that stage, you know the mm -hmm. kind of area you stay in. You know what's prevalent. Mm. You know, before someone gets to your door, 
that means there's been several security breaches. Okay. You know, that means the, the property is not fenced. Mm. It's a bungalow per se. You know, yeah. things that should have alerted you. There's no security personnel by the gate or something. Mm. But if you find yourself at that situation, maybe normal face me, I face you, and then it's a routine robbery. You know, that's what we say. Once you are there, you're already a victim. You know, mm. anything you do might be counterproductive. Um, the the first aid or the quick early response you can do at that point is to put a call through to the police yeah. while they are at the, while door. They are the but door. You have to cooperate. It's advised to cooperate at that point. So the police, do they have some kind of short code? Yeah, they have they some have emergency, emergency lines. Emergency uh, yeah, lines. depending yes. on your location, they, they release these things frequently. Yes. They have emergency so we, when we go to the police website, we can find out. Of course, for depending on your location, different states, different cities, you get the code for that area jurisdiction. You have it handy. They have it as your speed dial. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, let's uh, look at situation. This season, people are going to start traveling and um, breaking into your homes when you are away. What are some of the things to do to protect? Because I know they'll say, put off all the lights oh, outside and inside oh, so that we'll save electricity. True. So what are some of the things we should do to protect our things while we're... Mm. This is the traveling period. Mm. And um, the security measures you take while living for a daily activity is not the same. Okay. For a daily activity, we'll advise leave your lights on so no one could tell when you're home or when you're not home. If, um, it has your light inside or yeah, outside? Both. Just leave it on. You know, nobody can predict if you're in or if out. If they didn't see my card, they'll know I'm not in. Well, you can't okay. predict. You know, the, the burglars like to be sure. Yeah. You know. So, but when you're traveling, it's a different kettle of fish. When you're traveling, it's advice you let your neighbors know. It's mm. advice you take little measures. Make sure you don't leave your key behind. Some people are used to hiding keys in certain areas mm. and think it's safe. Make sure that your neighbors or someone knows that, okay, keep an eye on my property. You know, have like some kind of um, community watch. You let them know who is around, who is not around. And then they do routine um, vigilante movements around that area. Mm. It could go a long way. Oh, <coughs> okay, thank you. <coughs> Let's take some messages here. Hello, Cecil Scorpion. Oh, St oh Scorpion Stings. Thank you very much, Sunday. <laughs> Where can I get Blackstone? Fumi is asking. All right, my name is Pastor Johnson Samuel. Please help us explain for that the issue of stroke. How, do you, how does it start? Thank you. Well, we've taken that already. We just noted that. We'll take that. I'm gonna, my name is David. I'm calling, um, okay, from Imo State. I have a gas burn. I put it in for two minutes and it stopped. Okay, and I says, what about dog bites? All right, let's take, um, let's take the dog bites and the person asking how a stroke starts. <clears throat> how it strokes that thing you explained it yeah but yeah we said the origin <coughs> is from high blood pressure mm. make sure that you always go for constant checking so that your pressure will not just shoot overnight mm. because its origin it originated from the pressure once the pressure is too high the brain cannot withstand then definitely it will rupture by the time it ruptured then the stroke setting Mm, okay, yes. all right. So, um, <coughs> the other question dog bites. Yeah, dog, dog bites. Commonly, we have all these pet dogs around us. So, we have to ensure that our dogs are vaccinated. If they are not vaccinated, once the dog's bite has happened, it's a wound already. Then, the wound has set up. You need to make sure that you clean the wound. In dog bite, you have to clean with soap water. Mm. Okay, yeah. Because of the rabies infection, you have to clean the wound with soap water, then you cover the wound, then you refer this casualty to the nearby facility for him to take the anti rabies. What about bingo? You know, bingo, those ones that are straight up on the road, they just go and they just, they just bite you. That's what they are really. <laughs> so, those are the most dangerous ones because yes. you don't know their status, whether they're being vaccinated or not vaccinated. So mm. the best thing is that once it happens, then you need to see the medical practitioners. Okay. Then they will give you the necessary uh, support you, you need. Okay. All right. Someone is asking, can you pick up your call? No, this is not a phone-in program. This is just a t um, texting program. So please do text. All right. Let's take this quick um, one. I think we should just take this one on the, um, drowning. Yes. The... For those who live around water-prone areas, you may want to take, you want to learn a thing or two when someone is drowning. I did this one when I visited Makoko in Lagos State. You know Makoko under that bridge. You know Makoko. I was from Makoko. Just oh last yes, week. you are. Just wow. like you know Makoko. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at this.
tucked away in the ampit of Yaba, an iconic transit nerve center of Lagos, is this watery enclave. This is Makoko, a labyrinth on water. Each bend marks the end of a challenge, while the next offers its own tests. Survival is a unifying creed. In the deep reaches of Makoko, a training is ongoing. It could be the difference between life and death. This is the way much you can do. So first thing where you go do, match you, match you, you call her, match you, match you, match you, no answer me, match you, keep your hand, relax. What thing go do you? Match you, match you, no answer you. Check mouth, whether something don't chop something inside the water. If nothing there, you go sit here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You go put Looking at the environment, they, they need a lot of experience in first aid to be able to survive in this kind of environment. Um, we, we came up um, with a module called um, Dr. No Day. This is like a way of um, um, teaching the regular civilian living around this area on importance of first aid and how to go about it. You must not be a doctor to be a first aider. You could be anyone, you could be a child. You could do first aid appropriately, like the way doctors would do it. Like someone fall inside water, no one have the idea of pressing or doing anything. What they would do is like, like take the person to hospital, and sometime before they will take the person to the hospital, the person will give up. But with this now, it will help the community. If you do this thing, you can rescue anybody. Doctor No Day is a first aid training scheme. It is the brainchild of Chuma, a young Nigerian entrepreneur with a penchant for providing simple answers to complex issues. It is designed to provide hands-on knowledge for immediate assistance in an environment where access to Medicare is almost inexistent. It's from our Pigeon English, and it says there is no doctor. That's what it translates to. Now, that project is aimed at communities where Within a two, three hundred or four hundred meter radius, there is no doctor. Now, it's a first aid training uh, for people that are semi literate or illiterate, English wise. So, you don't go in there with your regular slides to teach first aid training. Um, we go there and sit with them and then teach them the basics of first aid. The whole idea is if any first aid, if any emergency situation comes up, at least you would have first responders that would be able to hold the situation down while the person is being moved to a hospital. I mean, that is a direct impact. For every person we train, it means there's one person to save a life. Yeah, you can imagine someone getting drowned in that water there. I don't know. Or even, well, even a swimming pool around, we... Yeah, people, children, young people uh, drown in swimming pools. So at least uh, these are some first aid. Red Cross, it's, um, it's good that you go around doing some of this first aid, taking people on this first aid. Like this message from Prince from Benin says, Good afternoon, I want to commend you for this educative program. I want to say it is very important to have the first aid box at home, schools, religious um, or worship centers, offices, recreational centers. I also want to appeal to the Red Cross to please take the training programs to the places mentioned above and rec recruit personnel to handle whatever situation arising at a particular place. Prince from Benin. So I think it's important. I don't know how your training program works. So do you go from place to place to take this training or do people ask you and you go there? Yeah, definitely. Particularly, you know, like most of the training goes for our volunteers. Expect areas where there are crises, where we go for community training. We train the community mm. on how to have this first aid knowledge for them to respond. But most of the, our training goes for our volunteers. We have volunteers across all over the countries. We have more than 800,000 volunteers 
in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and we have 37 branches, including Abuja. So we are all over the country. So mm -hmm. the Red Cross, we don't uh, say it's, it's an humanitarian organization, despite the fact that we are established by Act of Parliament. Okay, this is not an advert right now for the Red Cross. Let's leave it at that. Hi, Cecil. Nice show. Please keep it up. Cheers. Thank you very much. You didn't write to your name, but thank you. Who is this? Voice of Benway. Say, Voice of Benway, Comrade Awoke John from Ado Local Government Area of Benway States. My name is, okay. I love your program. Please keep educating Nigerians about health and safety. God bless you all. Thank you. Um, who is this? Good afternoon. What are the necessary things that are supposed to be in a first aid box? Necessary things in the first aid box. <coughs> Depending on the first aid, the general first aid box now, 21st century, there's no drugs. No drugs. Completely. Paracetamol. No drugs. Uh -uh. Paracetamol. Even that's paracetamol. the everyday. Even paracetamol. In the modern first aid box now, you can't get paracetamol. Okay, inside. please break it down. Explain because to me. Because we are trying to avoid cells prescription despite the fact that we know that paracetamol is for analgesic but by the time <coughs> they allow proliferation of paracetamol in our first aid boxes you find other people very little thing they take paracetamol very little thing they take paracetamol. okay don't paracetamol. worry i won't put it in the box i'll put it somewhere else so most of the things are inside are bandages hand gloves plasters those are those are the, the simple things that are inside the the first aid box. Okay. Okay. Did I hear? What is the first treatment that one should be, one should be given to someone with nose bleeding? Epitaxis. That is nose bleeding. Epitaxis. Yes. Is that English? Medical term. Okay. Now speak English. Okay. Nose bleeding is purely, if you look at the nose, inside the nose, there are tiny, tiny blood vessels who are very fragile. So by the time the nose bleeding starts, you kneel the head down and you pinch oh, the nostril and you tell that person to breathe from the mouth. Because of the fragility of the nostril, very tiny, tiny, by the time you, you stop it for a little minute, you see, because clotting time is three to five min uh, uh, minutes. So mm. by the time you hold it for a few seconds, clotting will take place and the bleeding will stop. If it is not a massive bleeding, by the time you do that for some five minutes, it has not stopped. You try to move this. Wow. To the nearby wow. Facility. Okay. But and kneel the head down, not so that the blood goes, doesn't goes in. go back Let in. Let it come out. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, who is this? I love your show, Ses. Okay. I love your show, Ses Ses from Kano. Thank you very much. Now, let's talk um, very quickly. Oops. <coughs> we don't have so much time now. I needed you to just touch a little on epilepsy. Very important. Okay, touch very quickly on epilepsy. Then you just give us some general safety tips for the LT2 before we say bye-bye. All right. What we're educating the community on epilepsy is the stigma against the epileptic people. It is never contagious. It is never infectious. It is something happening with the brain. Mm. I usually give example that when there's winds, you find out that once the wind blow the, the wires of the electric, there's a spark. Once it spark, what happens? They never took away their light. Okay. The same thing happens with the epilepsy. Once there's any touch within the brain. First aid, let's go straight up. The first aid is that just make sure that you open the airways, put the casualty in recovery position, Clear away the environment for him. He's going to be fine. And later, he will just wake up and find his way. Okay. Very briefly. Um, general safety tips for the altitude. Mm. This is the ember period. The mm. peak is the Christmas holiday. So I would say um, let's be aware of our environment. Those that are traveling should make sure that um, their homes are well locked. It's not locked until it's locked. So make sure you double check every premises. Mm -hmm lock and inform appropriate personalities that need to know. Don't post your traveling expedition on social media till you return. You know, so post it after you've enjoyed, married and come back to your home, you can mm. post it. Because some of these people out there are monitoring every, everything out there.
and then basically try to get a secure uh, transport company. If you're not flying, if you're driving, have a good company. Uh, we trust the federal government to provide security on the highways, and uh, we'll do our bit by being security away. All right. Um, thank you very much. Quite um, informative, um, educative, I must say. So remember, don't just post. All right, Motopark Airport just landed. No, please don't do that until when you arrive. I really would have asked you about electrocution. Yeah, but um, I don't have time. I know that those will say the dry stick and beat the person until I don't know. But sorry, we don't have time. Or do you want to say a word on that? Yeah, try to just to off the, the, power, the, source. The, the source of the power. All right, so, um, that's the much that we can take on the medley show with Cecil for today. I hope you learned a thing or two. But it's okay. I'll send you the link and uh, on our on the status and then you get or you can watch it on our YouTube channel NTA series. My name is Cecil and it's great that we did this together. Let's do this again next week.